Morning, everyone. I'm Jenna Lee. Welcome to Fox Business Morning. Here's a look at what happened in your world while you were sleeping. Donaher making some merger and acquisition news. The Wall Street Journal telling Fox Business the industrial conglomerate was ready to close a deal for Tektronix. Now, the proposed $2.8 billion all-cash deal would value Tektronix shares at $38 each. Tektronix, which is an electronic test and management company, closed Friday at $28.34. Well, Hitachi says it has successfully reduced the size of a key component in hard drives. Hitachi says the discovery will enable computer makers to quadruple the memory of your laptops and music players. The company made the announcement at a conference in Tokyo overnight and says it expects the technology to be available to the public by the year 2011. Now, Hitachi is an ADR. American Depository Receipt. An ADR is actually a certificate of shares of a foreign stock that trades right here in the U.S. Hitachi trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol HIT. The stock currently trading around 67 bucks. All right, the Colorado Rockies are now one step away from baseball's World Series. The Rockies beat the Arizona Diamondbacks 4-1 to last night. I was watching this game. That victory gives the Rockies a 3 to nothing edge in the series. Game four is tonight in Denver. And tonight only on Fox, the Boston Red Sox and Cleveland Indians meet in game three of the American League Championship Series in Cleveland. The series is tied at a game apiece. All right, in Sunday night football, the New Orleans Saints were in Seattle to play the Seahawks. Now, the biggest highlight from the game was the one that almost didn't happen. During a timeout in the first quarter, an NBC camera suspended above the field came crashing down and almost hit some of the Seahawks players. After a short delay, the camera was moved out of the way. Things didn't get much better for the Seahawks after the incident, though. The Saints won the game 28-17. to And here's a quick look at your Fox Business Traveler's forecast. Clear sky on the East Coast should make it easy for travel there. Showers moving into the Midwest later in the day could force delays at Chicago's airports. Your full forecast is coming up before our next break. And here's a look at the stock index futures right now. It looks like we're headed for a higher open. Dow futures are up eight with fair value down about 14. All right. Well, some major banks are reportedly banding together to prevent a second wave of mortgage woes from hurting the economy. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Citigroup, Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase are working on a plan to support the market for mortgage-backed securities and other investments. Now, the Journal reporting they would create a fund to buy as much as $100 billion worth of debt. That, in turn, could give investors more confidence to put money into the troubled credit market. The Treasury Department is also involved, and an official announcement could be made today. Well, activist investor Carl Icahn may be looking to stir things up again over at Motorola. Well, the Financial Times reporting that Icahn could make another run at gaining a seat on the board of the electronics giant. Now, Icon tells the FT that if Motorola does not perform up to par, he would seriously think about coming back. Icon tried to get a seat on the board in May and owns more than 70 million shares in Motorola, and that amounts to 3% of the company. Motorola's ticker, MOT, as you can see there, trading in the $19 range. Well, the fight to keep cable vision from going private is also heating up. Fund manager Mario Gabelli says he will vote against a $10.6 billion buyout of the New York area cable operator. Now, cable vision is accepting the Dolan's family's offer for about $36 a share. Gabelli says the company is worth at least $50 a share. IS, ISS Governance Services also says the Dolans are not paying enough. Cablevision, ticker symbol CVC, last close at just above $34 a share. And after years of delays, mistakes, and setbacks, Airbus is delivering its first A380 Super Jumbo jet to Singapore Airlines. The European plane maker is holding a handover ceremony at its company headquarters in Toulouse, France. It's taken about seven years and $15 billion to finish the double-decker jet. During that time, rival Boeing has become the top-selling aircraft maker. Airbus hoping the A380 turns things around. The first flight from Singapore to Sydney is scheduled just 10 days from now on October 25th. Double-decker jet. I like that. All right. Well, let's face it. Every day there are winners and every day there are sinners in business, politics, entertainment, sports. Well, pretty much anywhere you look. 
And here at Fox Business, we feel it's our duty and also in your best interest that we keep track. So every morning, we'll take a look at that day's winners and that day's sinners. All right, first up, good story for you. A couple of American heavyweights giving us a new chapter in the cola wars. And this time, it's physical. Two delivery men for Coke and Pepsi got into an altercation outside a Pennsylvania Walmart this weekend. After counterpunching each other with verbal barbs for several minutes, the two apparently tried to run each other down with pallets of their products. That's when Pepsi's David Paulina allegedly punched Robert Cusco. All right, in the face uh, three times breaking his nose and giving him a black eye. Police are continuing to investigate the incident. Remember that? No Coke, Pepsi. No Coke, Pepsi. All right, well, the Ohio State University and South Florida University, a pair of winners. The rash of upsets occurring each week in college football has helped propel the Buckeyes and Bulls to the top two spots in this season's initial bowl championship series poll. Unbeaten Ohio State, now 7-0, and also ranked first in the Associated Press and USA Today polls. As for the Bulls, well, they didn't even have a football program until 1997. Talk about your great investments. Now, the top two schools in the final BCS standings on December 2nd will play for the national title. Well, Conagra is a sinner this morning. The company coming under fire for the manner in which it recalled salmonella-tainted pot pies. Critics claiming that Conagra's decision to wait until last Thursday to recall the pot pies increased the chances that more people would actually become sick. The delay also opening up the company to greater liability. Conagra issued a health alert on Tuesday and asked stores to stop selling banquet and some brand chicken and turkey pot pies, but the recall did not come until Thursday. USDA investigators are still working to determine the cause of the contamination. And filmmaker Tyler Perry is a winner again. Perry's latest film, Why Did I Get Married, pulled in $21.5 million this weekend, topping the box office charts. It marks the third time Perry has claimed box office gold for an opening. Now, his 2005 hit Diary of a Mad Black Woman debuted with nearly $22 million, and Medea's family reunion opened with $30 million in 2006. The 38-year-old Perry starred in, directed, and produced all three films. All right, to the overseas markets now. Prices on the Tokyo Exchange closed higher overnight. The Nikkei average up almost 27 points today. Let's see what the European markets are doing. Fox Business London reporter Ashley Webster joins us with the latest. Ashley, what's going on? Good morning from London, Nicole, to you with the work week just kicking off here in Europe. Stocks uh, trading on the upside, fueled by oil. BP and Royal Dutch doing very well today. The FTSE up by about 17 points at this hour. The DAX down by about 10. And the CAC uh, trading up about uh, 15 points in France. Well, all of this compares in comparison to Asia. The Hang Seng and Hong Kong trading up by almost 500 points. The big story in Asia, also the energy stocks, as crude oil prices have traded again near record prices. PetroChina, for instance, has traded up by almost 10 percent. BHP Billiton, Australia's largest oil producer, also up by about 1 percent, which again is new record territory for them. You mentioned the Airbus delivering its super jumbo jet to Singapore Airlines today. Still many in questions uh, for investors about this company. The plane maker has yet to convince investors it will overcome production delays and reverse losses that total a whopping $810 million. Of course, more than 20 company executives also being uh, investigated for insider trading. Now, production was delayed after French and German planners used different computer design tools. Get this, forcing workers to install 300 miles of wiring by hand. Yikes. Wouldn't you like to do that job? Well, that's the latest from London, where stocks, for the most part, are on the up. Back to you in New York. See, some people are very talented installing that wire by hand. All right, Ashley, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, well, she wants to be president, and Hillary Clinton says she plans to enforce fiscal responsibility. That's what the New York senator told the Fox Business Network's Alexis Glick in a one-on-one -on -one interview. Here's some of that interview that you'll see later on this morning on Money for Breakfast. I'm for returning to fiscal responsibility. I'm for restoring fairness uh, in our economy. I am for creating opportunities by making college affordable again. Also ahead for you today on Money for Breakfast, could the world's biggest computer and printer maker be buying out the number one maker of cameras? 
well, former chairwoman and CEO of Hewlett Packard, and now Fox Business Network contributor Carly Fiorina will be here to talk about it. We'll also be hearing from one of the most powerful owners in the National Football League, the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, talks about building a winner. And he's been called the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. You want to guess who I'm talking about? But he has also been a success outside the squared circle. We're talking about Oscar De La Hoya, about his business skills. It's all coming up when Peter Barnes and Alexis Glick start up Money for Breakfast at 7 a.m. Jenna. All right, lots to look forward to. But by now, uh, everyone is familiar with the soaring cost of oil. Prices have more than doubled in the last four years. A barrel of crude closed uh, Friday at a record $83.60. Some analysts believe $100 per barrel is inevitable. Well, my next guest says, bring it on. Aaron Task, editor of TheStreet.com, says the higher the oil, the better the economy. And he joins us this morning. Uh, good morning, Aaron. Hi, Jim. All right. So, the, you know, when we report soaring oil prices, we usually say, listen, the markets are up despite of soaring oil prices. But you say They're it's be because. Because of. I mean, higher oil prices is a sign that the global economy is strong. Oil prices are higher because of all this global demand that's going on. That's good for U.S. multinationals, the big cap companies that make up the Dow, and also energy stocks are now a very big part of the S&P 500 and the Dow. You have Exxon and Chevron in the Dow. So when oil prices go up, those stocks go up, and that's good for the stock market. All right. Well, we saw uh, crude gain about 3% last week, I believe. Um, are you telling me, and we saw tech stocks also gain last right. week. Are you saying, listen, at this time period, invest in energy companies like you're investing in tech? Right. Well, for the last five years, energy has been the tech sector. It's been the hot place to be where a lot of the hot money has gone. All the day traders have been trading these energy stocks. What's going on now is maybe some of that money is shifting back into technology, which has picked up some steam. But I don't think you want to abandon energy at all because there still has that forward momentum and crude prices are going to remain high and probably going higher from here. Well, you know, the three largest oil companies uh, just last week, energy companies, excuse me, um, said that they weren't expecting their third quarters to actually top last year's. They were expecting to report lower third quarter results. What do you make of something like that? Well, well part of that is, you know, they talk about on Wall Street, about tough comparisons. They just said, you know, incredible qu third quarters last year. There's also some technicalities with refining margins or have been crunched a little bit, but we're in what they call the shoulder season in the energy world. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we get that first cold snap here in the Northeast or in the Midwest, those refining margins are going to widen out again and those stocks are going to do very well. It was interesting last week, Valero was one of those companies talked about that. The stock was up that day because the street knows the refining margins are tight now. They're going to widen out again. Well, you know, Aaron, though, what's good for the street is not necessarily good for all Americans. When we see higher oil prices, we see higher dairy prices, we see it kind of affect different areas of the business world in general. So, I mean, is what, what's great for the market also great well, for this, America? This is, this is the reality of you know, what's good for Wall Street, not necessarily good for Main Street. I think as an investor, this is why you want to be more heavily exposed to energy stocks than you do to stocks that are dependent on the consumer to continue to spend you know, beyond his means, unfortunately, which is what people are doing. But, uh, you know, energy, you know, I just don't like when I hear the market was up despite higher oil prices because you look at a chart five years, three years, one year, they're both sure. going up together. Well, okay, so then uh, on the flip side of that, if oil, crude oil starts to fall, I mean, some analysts were predicting that it would fall back down to $75, you know, after these highs. Um, does that mean that the markets are going to go right tumbling along with it? Well, if energy stocks take a tumble, that would not be good for the Dow and the S&P, but I don't think that's going to happen. And, and the analysts have been wrong about oil all the way up. They keep saying it's going to go back down. And, you know, I think we're heading, we're going to be, we're going to be at 100 before we see 65 again. All right. Well, I'm going to watch my words and not say despite of anymore. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Aaron. Um, we're going to check back in with Aaron later this morning for his holiday retail sales forecast. But first, here's Nicole with your first look at the business travel forecast. Nicole? We're certainly going to check in on the forecast, but I can tell you it's time to sharpen those skis because some of the ski resorts are going to be opening soon, and we're going to be telling you about that. But there is much more ahead for you on the Fox Business Network. We'll see what stories are making news on the Fox business morning radar one of those companies to watch today troubled toy maker mattel reporting earnings coming off a quarter where it saw thousands of its toys recalled due to fears of lead paint what are your future goals in life money for the down payment on a new home or someday buying what you've always dreamed of Start investing today for the things you want with ShareBuilder, and we'll match the first $50 you invest. Go to our website now and follow three easy steps. For a limited time, we'll match the first $50 you invest when you open your account. Don't put it off another day. 
Start investing for the things you want, like tuition for your kid's education, with ShareBuilder. It couldn't be easier to get going. Invest a little every month. There are no minimums. Open your account today, and we'll match your first $50. That's $50 towards whatever you dream of. Build toward the things you want with ShareBuilder. Awarded Forbes.com Best of the Web. This is a limited time offer. Act now, and we'll match your first $50. There's an investor in everyone, even you. Investment results vary and are subject to market risk, including the loss of principal. This special $50 TV offer is available for a limited time and only at the website shown. Have money for breakfast and get in on the action. We're going to be setting up the day for everybody. What's hot, who's making headlines, and what's next? We're bringing the market to life. This is about business news for everyone across this country. Stories that are going to be fun and entertaining and sometimes surprising. Alexis Glick, Peter Barnes, taking you behind the scenes, giving you a new perspective, helping you make the right decisions. This is going to be the trip of a lifetime. Stay ahead of the game. Have money for breakfast every day. Only on Fox Business. Welcome back to Fox Business Morning, along with Nicole Petalides. I'm Jenna Lee. Uh, here's a, that was a look at the, the close for some of the financials this morning. One of those names tops our Fox Business Morning radar. Citigroup is set to report earnings this morning. The financial giant already lowered expectations earlier this month. Citi says it now expects a 60% decline in income compared with the same period last year. Also on the Fox Morning radar is Mattel, the toy maker caught in the middle of the recall of Chinese toys because of lead concerns. Now Mattel reporting this morning and analysts are expecting earnings of 70 cents per share. Shares of Mattel, ticker symbol MAT, uh, trading in the red right now, just down a bit uh, at 22.45. And keep an eye on shares of Biogen Idic, the company's board authorizing management to look into buyout offers for the biotech firm. Biogen Idic says there are already some interested parties, including famed billionaire investor Carl Icahn. The company trades under the ticker symbol BIIB and is trading near $70 there. Well, at least 16 Chinese miners are dead this morning after being trapped for more than 30 hours in a state owned mine. The miners were underground Saturday when a tunnel became blocked with coal. The news comes as Chinese President Hu Jintao promises to improve worker safety and reduce industrial accidents. China's coal industry is the deadliest in the entire world. In the first seven months of this year, more than 2,100 miners have been killed on the job. Well, from miners to cancer rates. Cancer rates are falling faster than ever, according to an annual report by several cancer organizations. Scientists say between 2002 and 2004, the death rates fell by an average of 2.1 percent per year. The most progress came in the fight against colorectal cancer. It is still the number two cancer killer, but deaths are dropping by 5 percent a year among men and 4.5 percent among women. Researchers say new diagnoses are down thanks to screening tests that can spot polyps before they form cancer. There are also more drugs on the market to help in the fight. And the number one cancer killer certainly is lung cancer. All right, this may be surprising. U.S. companies are spending less time battling lawsuits, according to a new survey. A survey of in-house law firms suggests there may not be as much corporate litigation, but big companies are still fighting plenty of court cases. The most popular ones are about patents and product liability. The survey finding 17 percent of companies did not have to defend against any new lawsuits this year. 22 percent say they expect to face even more legal disputes over the next year. And chief executives are overpaid. At least that's what some of them are saying. A study out today from the National Association of Corporate Directors says four out of six top executives feel their compensation was high relative to their performance. About 2% of those surveyed say compensation was too low. This all comes as the gap between America's rich and poor is at its largest point in more than 60 years. I feel like I'm making too much, Jenna. All right, well, coming up on Fox Business Morning, another check on the business traveler's forecast. And can retailers bounce back from some sluggish sales numbers? We'll talk to some experts next.
have money for breakfast and get in on the action. Alexis Glick, Peter Barnes. This is going to be the trip of a lifetime. Have money for breakfast only on Fox Business. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. It is your real hair. It's your natural hair. You wash it, you cut it, you swim with it. Bosley is the world's most experienced hair restoration experts, having pioneered virtually every major advancement in the art and science of hair restoration. I'm very, uh, very satisfied, very happy with what I've done. This has got to be one of the best decisions I've made in my life, I'll tell you that. Bosley hair restoration is a relatively simple outpatient procedure. The results look completely natural, and it's affordable on nearly any budget. Call the toll-free number now to receive your free no-obligation information kit that will help you decide if hair restoration at Bosley is right for you. You don't have to accept going bald. Do something about it right now. Call 1-800-691-1901. That's 1-800-691-1901. Call now. And welcome back to Fox Business Morning. Here's a look at your business traveler's forecast. We'll start out in the west where it's the worst. The Rockies saw at least a foot of snow, freezing rain in the lower elevations. Some ski resorts are opening in less than a month, actually. Temperatures near 40 degrees at Denver International. There's also a storm system in the Midwest. You'll have a day of chilly rain and showers in the western Great Lakes and northern plains. Showers and thunderstorms from Chicago to Kansas City. All over the northeast, However, it's great for flying conditions with sunny skies and mild temperatures. And there could be some trouble down south, so watch out for that. Thunderstorms with large hail and damaging winds could hit parts of Texas. But to the east, it's 80 degrees and sunny in Atlanta. Nicole, over to you. All right, well, warm weather cooled off retail sales for the third quarter. And although the numbers weren't as dramatically low as some analysts had anticipated, a happy holiday shopping season would be just the ticket for many of the retailers. For what to expect, we are joined again this morning by Mr. Aaron Task, editor of TheStreet.com. And we also bring in Mike Santoli, columnist and associate editor of Barron's. Good morning, gentlemen. Before Good I get morning. to retail, are you guys skiers? Are you guys scared? Bad you have skier. To, bad skier. <laughs> Not in a long time. <laughs> All right. Time to wax those skis, guys. All right, Aaron, let's start with you and talk about how the weather has affected retail. Right. Well, I mean, it certainly was an issue for a lot of retailers. Warmer than normal weather, and a lot of people had coats in the stores and sweaters that they couldn't offload. But you know, the issue is a lot of these retailers, they have climatologists on staff now. So somebody should have said to them, hey, it's going to be a warm September. Maybe you'll keep the, the winter inventories back in the warehouse instead of putting it out on, on the floor. Yeah, it's pretty tricky to try and buy something. You go to buy something in summertime and you see all like the wool and the cashmere. You're the not, down you're joke. You're not quite it ready it, yeah. to get in there and buy that. All right, Mike, tell us about the holiday shopping season. What's the outlook for that? Uh, I think it's going to be okay. I think the best you can say about it is that we're going to muddle through. And I think it's good to have low expectations at this stage of the season. You don't want uh, in October people saying it's going to be a blockbuster holiday season and then have disappointment down the road. I think uh, kind of shopper psychology is something that they've front-loaded the uh, holiday shopping season. They're looking for bargains. That's probably going to continue here. So I think we're going to be fine. I don't, I don't think it ever makes any sense to talk about the consumer. There's not a single consumer. It's a tremendous range of folks. Some of them are strapped. Many of them have money to spend. So I think low expectations right now sets us up for a uh, sort of better than feared holiday season. Should we throw out some names? Let's name some names. I mean, Walmart, for example, lowered the prices of their toys already. They're yes. trying to get a jump right. on the holiday shopping season. They want you to come there and maybe not go to Toys R Us or KB Toys or wherever. Right, or Kmart or Target. Or, or Kmart you know. or Target. So tell me about the holiday shopping season. Let's well, I think Mike is right. I think the expectations are low to the point where People are talking about it's the worst Christmas in five years, and I feel like every year for the last five years we've had those headlines, and the consumer always comes through because Americans, this is what we do. We love to shop. Right. And it also sets up the retail stocks for probably better performance, and you, typically you want to buy them right after or right before Thanksgiving, you know, the, the Black Friday. Is that when you, so you pick them up right before Black Friday, and when do you dump them? When you dump them, well, you dump them, you know, when you get into January and the January after, because people will be selling it's a new year, and they want to dump their winners, you know, and mm -hmm. start over a new year. So you can get a, you get a nice bump in those stocks into, in the holiday shopping season, but you don't want to wait until 
the holiday sales numbers come out, you say, oh, it was better than expected. That's not when you, that's the wrong All time. All right, so you have faith in the consumer. You I think do. the consumer is coming through. Mike, what do you think? I think the consumer is going to muddle through in total because people at the high end have so much to spend. The aggregate numbers are going to look fine. And at the lower end, as you mentioned, Walmart, uh, bargain hunters will definitely be served here by a lot of those mass market retailers. Last week, in fact, we saw great numbers from Costco. Target's also been doing very well. So you're seeing the mass market discounters actually uh, finding lots of demand there, right. people trading down to some degree. Well, well, Walmart is doing well. That's because people want to go for the lowest price. It's not because right. they want a great so shopping experience. What about some of the luxury retailers? Well, Nordstrom and Saks were a disappointment last mm -hmm. week, and that was really a surprise to a lot of people, and the stocks got hammered. You might want to look at a specialty retailer like Zumiez. It's doing really well. Abercrombie & Fitch, the kids love Abercrombie it. Abercrombie & Fitch, yeah, that's, that's a the place one. to go. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Aaron and Mike, thanks so much for joining us. And we will have much more from these guys later on in the hour. Jenna. All right, thanks, Nicole. Up next on Fox Business Morning, a check on the news that happened while you were sleeping. Plus, we'll get a check on the overseas markets from London. And some big banks are teaming up to try and stop the credit crunch by buying up some risky debt. We'll have the details and more when we come back. If you're remodeling your kitchen, you can't afford to miss this information. It's the information retailers don't want you to see. Prior to joining DirectBuy, we'd already priced out our whole entire house of cabinetry for this project, and it was going to come to a little over $60,000. But when we went back to DirectBuy, it came back with $38,000, and that was everything included. So the savings is uh, almost too, too good to be true. Imagine paying insider prices for items like kitchen cabinets, plumbing fixtures, countertops, and appliances. There's now a way to buy virtually everything you need at prices you never imagined possible. Call the number on your screen now to receive your free insider's guide to buying direct. Plus, you'll also receive a free visitor's pass for an exclusive tour of your local direct buy showroom. Call right now to get started buying the Direct Buy way. Stop paying retail and become part of Direct Buy, the private members-only showroom and design center. Don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call now. Today, he's tearing up the gaming industry. Tony Hawk talks up his billion-dollar venture. Plus, why is there a controversy? Larry Silverstein on Reviving Ground Zero. Don't even think of skipping it. Money for breakfast. And welcome back, everyone. This is Fox Business Morning. I'm Jenna Lee. And I'm Nicole Petalides. Here's a look at what happened in your world while you were sleeping. Well, Donna, her making some merger and acquisition news. Wall Street Journal telling Fox Business the industrial conglomerate was ready to close a deal for Textronics. The proposed $2.8 billion all-cash deal would value Textronics shares at $38 each. Textronics, which is an electronic test and measurement company, closed Friday at $28.34. Well, Hitachi says it has successfully reduced the size of a key component in hard drives. Hitachi says the discovery will enable computer makers to quadruple the memory of your laptops and music players. The company made the announcement at a conference in Tokyo overnight and says it expects the technology to be available to the public by the year 2011. Now, Hitachi is an ADR, or American Depository Receipt. An ADR is a certificate of shares of a foreign stock that trades in the U.S. Hitachi trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol HIT. The stock currently trading around $67 a share. And quick look at sports here. The Colorado Rockies are now one step away from baseball's World Series. The Rockies beat the Arizona Diamondbacks 4-1 to one last night. That victory gives the Rockies 3 to nothing edge in the series. Game 4 is tonight in Denver and tonight only on Fox. The Boston Red Sox and Cleveland Indians meet in Game 3 of the American League Championship Series in Cleveland. The series is tied at a game apiece. Boy, there was a lot of rain there last night. What a double play. All right, in Sunday night football, the New Orleans Saints were in Seattle to play the Seahawks. The biggest highlight from the game was the one that almost didn't happen. During a timeout in the first quarter, an NBC camera suspended above the field came crashing down and almost hit some of the Seahawk players. After a short delay, the camera was moved out of the way. Things didn't get much better for the Seahawks after the incident. The Saints win with the game 
28 to 17, but I did like one of the Seahawks fans who actually had her face painted with a Seahawk on it. It was pretty cool. All right, well, a quick look at your Fox Business Traveler's forecast. Clear skies on the East Coast should make for easy travel there. Showers moving into the Midwest later in the day could force delays at Chicago's airports. Your full forecast is coming up before our next break. All right, here's a look at the futures right now. The Dow is setting up for a higher open this Monday morning, up eight with fair value, down 14, up 23. All right, the fight to keep cable vision from going private is heating up. Fund manager Mario Gabelli says he will vote against a $10.6 billion buyout of the New York area cable operator. Now, cable vision is accepting the Dolan family offer for about $36 a share. But Gabelli says the company is actually worth at least $50 a share. ISS Governance Services also says the Dolans are not paying enough. Cable vision ticker symbol CVC last closed at just above $36. $34 a share. And U.S. companies are actually spending less time battling lawsuits, according to a new survey. A survey of in-house law firms suggests there may not be as much corporate litigation, but big companies are still fighting plenty of court cases. The most popular ones are about patents and product liability. The survey finding 17% of companies did not have to defend against any new lawsuits this year. 22% say they expect to face even more legal disputes over the next year. Well, some major banks are reportedly banding together to prevent a second wave of mortgage woes from hurting the economy. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Citigroup, Bank of America, and J.P. Morgan Chase are working on a plan to support the market for mortgage-backed securities and other investments as well. The Journal reporting they would create a fund to buy as much as $100 billion worth of debt. That, in turn, could give investors more confidence to put money into the troubled credit market. The Treasury Department is also involved and an official investment announcement could be made today. While well, activist investor Carl Icahn may be looking to stir things up once again at Motorola. The Financial Times reporting that Icahn could make another run at gaining a seat on the board of the electronics giant. Icahn tells the FT that if Motorola does not perform up to par, he would seriously think about coming back. Icon tried to get a seat on the board in May and owns more than 70 million shares in Motorola. That amounts to 3% of the company. Motorola's ticker symbol, as you can see right there, is MOT, trading about 19 bucks. All right, to the overseas markets now. Prices on the Tokyo Exchange closed higher overnight. The Nikkei average up almost 27 points today. Let's see what the European markets are doing. Fox Business London reporter Ashley Webster joins us with the latest. Hi, Ashley. Hello there, Nicole from London. It seems like oil is fueling the markets both in Asia and here in Europe, although let's begin in Europe where the FTSE is uh, up by about 19 points. Not bad. The DAX down about four. The CAC in France up by about 15 points. But energy really being the big story, those numbers pale in comparison to what's been going on in Asia. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong up by nearly 500 points. Again, the big story has been the energy companies. Crude oil prices trading near a record. PetroChina stock up by nearly 10%. BHP Billiton, Australia's largest oil producer, up by 1% today. Again, that's a record level. Here in Europe, BP, Royal Dutch, Shell, all trading much higher. So again, it uh, looks like oil prices fueling a uh, rally in the stocks today. Uh, you mentioned, or earlier we mentioned, the uh, Airbus is uh, presenting its first super jumbo jet to Singapore Airlines in France today. Still many questions uh, remain about Airbus and uh, operations. The plane maker has yet to convince uh, investors that it will overcome production delays and reverse losses that have totaled a massive $810 million. We should also mention, of course, that more than 20 company executives are being investigated for insider trading. Of course, none of this is really great news. Production was delayed, as it turns out, after French and German planners used different computer design tools, forcing workers to install, as we mentioned, 300 miles of wiring by hand. As Homer Simpson would say, do well, Northern Rock shares down 20% today after uh, Credit Suisse said that uh, there was significant downside risk in the uh, potential buying of Northern Rock, led by uh, Virgin Group, Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, I should say. 
So Northern Rock, perhaps not as attractive, and share prices today on Northern Rock down by about 20%. And finally, all eyes, of course, uh, later this week will be on the G7 meeting in Washington, where European finance ministers hope the U.S. will do something to strengthen the dollar. Right now, European exporters are being priced out of foreign markets, but that is a story for uh, later on this week. That's the very latest from London. Back to you in New York. All right. Thank you, Ashley. Well, she wants to be president, and Hillary Clinton says she plans to enforce fiscal responsibility. That's what the New York senator told the Fox Business Network's Alexis Glick on a one-on-one -on -one interview. Here's some of that interview you'll see later this morning on Money for Breakfast. I'm for returning to fiscal responsibility. I'm for restoring fairness uh, in our economy. I am for creating opportunities by making college affordable again. All right, also ahead for you today on Money for Breakfast, could the world's biggest computer and printer maker be buying out the number one maker of cameras? Former chairwoman and CEO of Hewlett Packard and now a Fox Business Network contributor, Carly Fiorina, will be here to talk about it. We'll also be hearing from one of the most powerful owners in the National Football League, the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, talks about building a winner. And he's been called the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, but he has also been a success outside the squared circle. We're talking to Oscar De La Hoya about his business skills. It's all coming up when Peter Barnes and Alexis Glick start up uh, Money for Breakfast at 6 a.m. Nicole? All right. Well, October 19th, 1987. Sound familiar? Better known as Black Monday. The Dow sank an unthinkable 508 points, or 23 percent, the equivalent of 3,200 points in today's soaring markets. It was the second biggest drop ever. Exactly what and who were to blame has been debated for, well, two decades. But the bigger question now is could it happen again? With us again is Mike Santoli, associate editor and columnist for Barron's. Mike, what do you think? Well, look, there's some reasons for actually executing this comparison right now, because back then we were in a five-year-old bull market. Now we're in a five-year-old bull market. Back then we had some trade tensions. Then it was Japan. Now it's China. The dollar was very weak back then also is weakening right now. Those are the parallels, but I don't think there's nearly as much air underneath this market that would create that kind of uh, adjustment that was so sudden and violent. Uh, for one thing, inflation worries come in there at all? Certainly. Inflation was higher back then. Interest rates were much higher. In fact, interest rates were edging toward 10 percent on the Treasury securities. That's nowhere near where we are now. And also stocks were much more expensive relative to their earnings than they are right now. So you have some of the preconditions, but not nearly all of them. And of course, I'd point out a what crash. What are some of the ones that are different? Uh, mostly it's the uh, it's the economic backdrop. Companies are uh, a little bit stronger right now in terms of their cash balances. Uh, we do have, as I say, cheaper stocks than we had back then. That probably uh, is the biggest one. Also, we have some mechanical uh, safeguards that we didn't have then. The technology. No, the technology. Right. And in fact, we have these parameters, how much the market can fall in a given day. Those are really more technical issues. But it seems to me that uh, there probably are more important differences than parallels. What I would also point out is in 1987, we didn't have a lot of people running around saying, 20 years ago, we had a crash. Today we have that, and I think a lot of that worry almost insulates us from something similar going on right now. We're aware of the, at least the remote possibility. How do you think the week will pan out with, this, with this in mind? I have a feeling that the week is going to shrug as it comes to the anniversary, but I do think you're going to hear a lot of talk about it. Who knows if it's going to scare the average person on the street who's not been terribly involved in the stock market right now. We don't have a very speculative stock market. It's edging in that direction. Back then we did have a more speculative stock market. And I was thinking, actually, about the consumer and how the consumer plays into this. I mean, how people in America are feeling right now. What sure. is the sentiment of, of consumers and people in America and how it plays into them? You know, it's a little bit of a lukewarm uh, investor and consumer psychology right now, given the overall economic numbers. That's probably, again, something where we don't have excessively high hopes, you definitely are not set up for as much disappointment. I know it sounds like reverse logic, but that's kind of what you want to see. You want to see muted expectations going into any news event. Because there's really it's... two sides of it. I mean, there's like the actual numbers, sure. and then there's the psychology, which always, you know, sometimes they're the contrarian right. indicators that we watch. And also I wanted to ask you about the outlook, you know, for the quarter ahead sure. and how that plays in. Well, look, the market has come an awful long way in a short period of time. We're up about 15 percent from mid-August. We definitely have the momentum. The way I've been looking at it is the bulls sort of have won back the benefit of the doubt, but we need to rest at some point here if we're not going to uh, essentially have uh, a little bit of a more dangerous overshoot 
to the upside. But I think we're actually looking like fourth quarter tends to be pretty decent for the stock market. Uh, I would look for whether we're going to peak a little bit earlier than the very end of the year, given how much momentum we have already. And also the Fed meeting at the end of the month, too. Certainly. All right. Thanks, Mike Santoli. Mike will be back with us in just a few minutes to talk fast food winners with us. Jenna. All right. Thanks, Nicole. Let's get you up to date on traveling conditions around the country this morning. We'll start out in the west where it's the worst right now. The Rockies saw at least a foot of snow, freezing rain in the lower elevations. Some ski resorts are opening in less than a month there. Temperatures near 40 degrees at Denver International. There's also a storm system in the Midwest. You'll have a day of chilly rain and showers in the western Great Lakes and northern plains. Showers and thunderstorms from Chicago to Kansas City. And all over the the northeast great flying conditions will have sunny skies and mild temperatures and there could be however some trouble down south thunderstorms with large hail and damaging winds could hit parts of texas but to the east is 80 degrees and sunny in atlanta all right still to come on fox business this morning the u.s could be searching for a new company to handle private security in iraq we'll have the latest on the blackwater controversy next Stay focused for the next 60 seconds. That's all the time I have to tell you the truth about HD television, the truth your cable company doesn't want you to hear. Cable wants you to believe they're keeping up with HD capacity. They're not. But DirecTV is. And soon, DirecTV will be offering up to 150 HD channels. That's three times more than cable. Call now for the best in HD. DirecTV also has more sports in HD than cable. And with DirecTV, Every channel is 100% digital picture and sound. Do you know what else? Packages start at only $29.99 per month. Compare that to your cable bill. There are no startup costs, no equipment to buy, and professional installation is free. Call now. You also get a free HD receiver or DirecTV DVR upgrade. Call immediately and receive a free 7-inch portable DVD player from America's number one satellite provider. Time's up. Make the call. Fox Business is business news for everybody. Following the markets, every move. There's going to be a lot of fire, a lot of passion. We'll break it down and show you how it affects your bottom line. There's no reason the business news has to be boring. The daytime block, more than just numbers, only on Fox Business. Well, welcome back to Fox Business Morning along with Jenna Lee. I'm Nicole Petalides. Here's what's on the Fox Business Morning radar. Citigroup, Mattel, and Charles Schwab among the bigger names reporting earnings today. Wall Street paying special attention to Citi after the financial giant warned that year-over-year -year earnings would fall 60% because of subprime problems. Citi's ticker symbol is C, trading near $48 a share on the New York Stock Exchange. Also, keep an eye on Merck today. The drug maker says it received FDA approval for new HIV treatment, a drug called Icentris is the first in a new class of drugs used to battle HIV. Merck, ticker symbol MRK, trading in the $53 a share range, as you can see there. And after numerous delays, Airbus has finally delivered its first A380 jumbo jet, now the world's largest passenger plane. The double-decker jet is being delivered to Singapore Airlines. The A380 is almost two years behind schedule and nearly $7 billion over budget. American diplomats are working on ways to fill a major security gap in Iraq. U.S. and Iraqi officials are negotiating Baghdad's demand that the security company Blackwater USA be expelled from the country within the next six months. The trouble stems from a September 16th incident where Iraqi officials say Blackwater guards opened fire without prov provocation, killing 17 Iraqi citizens. Both sides are also negotiating payment by Blackwater of $8 million in in compensation for each victim. Well, at least 16 Chinese miners are dead this morning after being trapped for more than 30 hours in a state-owned mine. The miners were underground Saturday when a tunnel became blocked with coal. The news comes as Chinese President Hu Jintao promises to improve worker safety and reduce industrial accidents. China's coal industry is actually the deadliest in the world. In the first seven months of this year, more than 2,100 miners have been killed on the job. 
Well, Money for Breakfast with Alexis Glick and Peter Barnes is just minutes away. Let's see what we can look forward to. Peter is here with a preview. Peter. Well, hi, ladies. You have done a great job kicking things off for us this morning, and you have inspired a great first edition of Money for Breakfast. We'll check on all the stocks to watch today, including Hewlett Packard and Kodak, which might be talking about a deal. But we'll also discuss the business of billboards, skateboards, and a certain clothing-challenged singing cowboy who is making a name for himself on the songboards. And wait until you see the million-dollar car I really hope to take a ride in later this morning. It's made by Volkswagen, but it's a really nice car and I really want to take a ride in it. All coming up on Money for Breakfast. Well, we'd like to see you in that car, Peter. We'll check that out. Well, the golden arches are shining bright. And still to come, we'll find out what's keeping McDonald's on top of the competition as it prepares to report its earnings. We'll have that next. Have money for breakfast and get in on the action. Alexis Glick, Peter Barnes. This is going to be the trip of a lifetime. Have money for breakfast only on Fox Business. If you're watching TV without great sound, you're missing half the excitement. But when you connect your TV to the Bose 321 GS DVD home entertainment system, your movies, music, and sports come to life in an exciting home theater experience. Forget about the complications of a conventional five-speaker system, and you won't need those wires running to the back of your room. With the 321 system, you only see two small speakers. The Hideaway Acoustamass module delivers deep, dramatic sound. And the built-in DVD CD player, FM AM tuner, and universal remote let you easily enjoy sound that John Budras of the Boston Globe magazine says rivals that of more expensive five satellite units. How does the 321 system deliver this kind of performance from just two speakers? In the past, to get sound from all directions, you needed five speakers. But after many years of researching the science of how people hear, Bose developed an easier way to enjoy home theater. It's called True Space Digital Surround Processing Circuitry. This technology Technology gives you the sense that sound is all around you, and it delivers this spacious sound experience from two speakers instead of five. If you set this system against somebody with just a regular television set, they would just be blown away by the sound they're getting out of these two speakers and the acoustic mass. It's it's uh, it's amazing. Call now to experience this revolutionary breakthrough in your own home. It's simple to set up and connects easily to equipment you already own, like a VCR. And if you love music. Ask about the 321 GSX system that lets you store 200 hours of your favorite CDs. Our excitement guarantee gives you 30 days to experience the 321 system in your own home risk-free. When you call, be sure to ask how you can make 12 easy payments with no interest charges from Bose. And if you order today, Bose will ship your system right to your front door free. So why settle for half the experience when the 321 GS and GSX systems give you so much more? All right, let's get you up to date on traveling conditions around the country this morning. We'll start out in the West where it's the worst. The Rockies saw at least a foot of snow, freezing rain in the lower elevations. Some ski resorts are opening in less than a month. Temperatures near 40 degrees at Denver International. There's also a storm system in the Midwest. You'll have a day of chilly rain and showers in the western Great Lakes and northern plains. Showers and thunderstorms from Chicago to Kansas City. All over the northeast, great flying conditions look for sunny skies and mild temperatures. And there could be some trouble down south. Thunderstorms with large hail and damaging woods could hit parts of Texas. But to the east, it's 80 degrees and sunny in Atlanta. Well, these are good days to be hanging out under the golden arches. McDonald's sales are up, the stock is soaring, and it is frying the competition. So what exactly has McDonald's done to beef things up? We're not into puns or anything no. here at the Fox Business Network. All right, joining us again, Aaron Task, editor of TheStreet.com, and Mike Santoli, associate editor and columnist for Barron's. Good morning again, gentlemen. Good morning. All right, so last week, McDonald's says, listen, third quarter sales uh, earnings in general are going to look good again. We've heard nothing but good news from them. Uh, is it just because of their breakfast menu? Is it cu because of coffee? Well, that's a, that's a big part of it. I mean, they've taken it to Starbucks, and people, you know, some people prefer their coffee, and it's cheaper. Also, they have that third pounder, which is that Angus burger, which is really good. And so, you know, you can start with breakfast in the morning, or you can have an egg muffin right now, and then, you know, maybe have salad for lunch, and then get your third pounder for dinner, and you're all set. And, and it's cheap. 
It is. I was going to say the bigger part of the story is their general value menu is really uh, a hit. It's right for the times. Obviously, people are somewhat trading down. And for people who think that consumer inflation is running away uh, on the upside, I always say look at the cost per calorie of a fast food value meal. (laughs) And honestly, it's it's gone nothing but down. It's a different way to look at calories. It's a good ratio. Well, you know, one of the things that McDonald's said is that, listen, their international growth has been Amazing. Right. And they, internationally, they're really prominent with their McCafes, which is their coffee restaurants, right? But beyond the coffee, beyond breakfast, where can McDonald's grow? I mean, where's going to be their next, I don't want to say gimmick, but where's their, <laughs> where is their next gimmick? Well, first of all, we were talking before about how oil prices being a good thing. Sure. McDonald's is one of those beneficiaries. They're a beneficiary of the strength in the global economy. They're also a beneficiary of the weaker dollar, which added about two to three cents to this quarter's earnings from the currency translations. So they are, they are growth overseas is, is where the growth is going to come from. But and they're not getting hurt by the higher dairy prices or the higher egg prices or all of those things that come with higher oil? oil prices as, right. as well? It, it's definitely an issue for them. It's, it's a factor. But to this point, as Mike talks, out, talks about, you, know, you can still go there and get a value meal, you know, right. very inexpensive. So they haven't had to pass it on to the consumer yet. I do think it's, I did th- think it's a challenge for McDonald's to keep newness on the menu. In other words, keep innovating. Salads were a big deal a few years back. They've had a series of hits. And I do think that investor and consumer expectations are relatively high with regard to McDonald's. The, the happy story on McDonald's is well out there already. So I do think they do have a challenge to actually keep meeting those high expectations. Well, Mike, what about, you know, look at what's going on with corn prices and mm-hmm. a race for ethanol. I mean, corn syrup, I would say McDonald's probably depends on. So what about that? I mean, is that something that could kind of take the legs out? I think at the margin, it's going to matter. I don't know that food costs are actually a huge component uh, in terms of their margins. They have enough play there. And as long as the top line keeps growing, if they keep actually having traffic and sales grow, they can definitely accommodate somewhat higher prices. Obviously, they wouldn't like to see them spiral up. And so what about, uh, we saw Yum Brands report last week. They were very right. successful. I mean, is there anyone, is there any competitors out there that could kind of take away some of this market uh, from well, McDonald's? Well, I, I think it's, a, it's an individual taste thing. I mean, some people prefer Wendy's, some people prefer Carl's Jr. But, you know, on a big scale, it's really tough to compete with McDonald's worldwide. And Yum Brands, again, another company benefiting from that growth overseas. Burger King's, you know, hanging in there tough. You know, I love their ads with the king, and, and he's everywhere. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of, of personal taste, and I think that whole segment is going to be doing better now because, again, the consumer is feeling a little bit pinched at the wallet and they're going to want to spend you know, less money. That's why some of those middle-tier restaurants, the Olive Gardens, are not doing as well right now. So, Mike, would you say out of the fast food chains, is McDonald's where, as an investor, you'd put your money? Well, I, I think that you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the, the stock and the company right now. As I say, though, Wall Street's very bullish on it. The, the good news is kind of out there, so you do set yourself up for the possibility of disappointment. I do think Yum Brands is probably uh, have, has more momentum, if anything, in Asia right now. It's a very reasonably valued stock. Of course, they do have a, a variety of different brands within the company, KFC, Taco Bell, etc. And one of those is always seems to be not working, so that's one of the things investors are concerned right. about. They, but they've done a great job, Yum Brands, of tailoring the food to the specific country that they're in. They're really, I think right now, the best in the industry at doing that. So would you also be, would Yum Brands get your vote? if you were suggesting I, I think Mike makes a great point. I mean, McDonald's, everyone knows the story now that they've, they've had several quarters in a row of better than expected earnings, and the bar just gets, keeps setting it set higher and higher. And there's only a few companies out there, Google, Rim, Apple come to mind, that are able to keep clearing that higher bar. And McDonald's, maybe it's getting a little too high for them. But yeah, Yum Brands would be the, the choice in that sector right now. Are you really pulling them in with the Rim and the Apples? That's how you're <laughs> putting McDonald's? You know, next thing, you're going to get a Happy Meal with, it, with an iPod. Yeah. It's coming, you ultimately, know, for right? the kids, because they need them. Yeah. Well, what a, and w- one last thing, I think it's interesting that McDonald's, I mean, with the amount of stores that they have in the United States, let's talk domestic right now, what about the value that they have on real estate? Is it's, that anything that adds to the company? It's significant. It's there within the, uh, on the books of the company. Uh, I know that McDonald's has discouraged the idea that they should somehow carve out their real estate holdings as a separate company to kind of shine a light on that value. But it's without a doubt a support uh, to the value of the, of the company in general. Uh, that was a big thing earlier this year when right. commercial let's, real estate was the now. hottest yeah. thing going. Uh, and everybody was looking at these huge multiples being paid for, uh, for commercial buildings. The thing is, a McDonald's restaurant isn't necessarily all that great. For using, for using anything but a, a fast food restaurant, the locations are great, but McDonald's doesn't want to shrink, so it's not as if you want to just sell the intersections. So we talked about what stocks you guys would like to buy if you were playing a fast food chain. So, uh, what about if you could buy a franchise? What would you, what would you buy? Just, Where would your bet place? Oh, I think McDonald's still, it, they are, you know. They have the brand. They have the brand. Right? Everyone knows them. You know what you're going to get, and that's what 
most people like. They're known to have the best locations too, which is exactly. a tremendous thing in this business. I have a feeling you guys like the Angus Burger far more than you've all admitted. <laughs> I'm a big fan. You know, I mean, I would have funny. it for breakfast if we had one right now. I would eat it right now. <laughs> now we know. I dare well, you to bring we'll get, one here. I'll eat it. <laughs> we'll get the producers on it. Mike and Aaron, thank you so much. Uh, once again, that was um, Aaron Taz. He is an editor of TheStreet.com, and Mike Santoli, who is associate editor and columnist for Barron's. Uh, Nicole, over to you. Happy meal with an iPod. I'd like one of those. All right. Well, coming up, great news this morning in the fight against cancer. Find out what's spurring a drop in death rates. And a trio of college students spent 30 hours in a cave. Find out how they got out alive. What are your future goals in life? Money for the down payment on a new home? Or someday buying what you've always dreamed of? Start investing today for the things you want with ShareBuilder, and we'll match the first $50 you invest. Go to our website now and follow three easy steps. For a limited time, we'll match the first $50 you invest when you open your account. Don't put it off another day. Start investing for the things you want, like tuition for your kid's education, with ShareBuilder. It couldn't be easier to get going. Invest a little every month. There are no minimums. Open your account today and we'll match your first $50. That's $50 towards whatever you dream of. Build toward the things you want with ShareBuilder. Awarded Forbes.com Best of the Web. This is a limited time offer. Act now and we'll match your first $50. There's an investor in everyone, even you. Investment results vary and are subject to market risk, including the loss of principal. This special $50 TV offer is available for a limited time and only at the website shown. Today, he's tearing up the gaming industry. Tony Hawk talks up his billion-dollar venture. Plus, why is there a controversy? Larry Silverstein on Reviving Ground Zero. Don't even think of skipping it. Money for breakfast. Tonight, trumping the Donald. Can this multifaceted daughter outshine her dad when it comes to her new business? Ivanka Trump tells all. Pull up a stool. It's time for a shot of Gomez and Willard straight up. Happy hour. Well, cancer rates are falling faster than ever, according to an annual report by several cancer organizations. Scientists saying between 2002 and 2004, the death rates fell by an average of 2.1 percent per year. The most progress came in the fight against colorectal cancer. It is still the number two cancer killer behind lung cancer, but deaths are dropping by 5 percent a year among men and 4.5 percent among women. Researchers saying new diagnoses are down thanks to screening tests that can spot polyps before they actually form cancer. There are also more drugs on the market to help in the fight. Well, it will be some story to tell for three college students in Texas. They are safe and sound this morning after being trapped underground in a narrow tunnel cave for more than 30 hours. You see them right there. The trio went into the two-mile-long uh, two Airman's Cave near Austin on Saturday morning. When they didn't return by midnight, friends called for help. The adventurous group did take some precautions. Apparently, they left a trail for, of leaves, a trail of leaves for search teams to follow. I wouldn't think that leaves would be the way to go. Imagine, <laughs> imagine their feeling coming out of that cave finally after 30 hours. I'll hike. I'll, 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 I'll ski. I don't do caves. The whole you know, spelunky thing doesn't, no. <laughs> Hike and ski, no caves. I can tell you, actually, in order to obtain a scuba certification, I actually went into a cave. It was a cave dive. But the thing know. was, you didn't quite know what was around the corner. A little spooky. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us on Fox Biz this morning. Money for Breakfast with Alexis Glick and Peter Barnes starts right now.